Hey there folks, Josh here with Shoe Photography. And in today's video, we're gonna be going out and testing the R200 ring flash head from Godox. I'm gonna start right up front, let you know that this is gonna be a pretty long video, but I am gonna be putting chapter markers down below so you can come back and see those individual pieces that you want to focus on. If you guys haven't watched my overview video yet on this R200 kit, go ahead and click up here and watch that video. Same with the last video, Godox is not sponsoring this video. They're not paying me to say anything, but they did send me all of these pieces of equipment to test out and give my honest feedback on. Be sure to stick around all the way to the end where I give my final thoughts on this system, the things that I like about it, the things that I don't like about it. And with all that out of the way, let's get into it. So we're out here in a little town called Tubac. I'm here with my model today, Magale. She is a model that I've known for several years and she's gonna be out here helping me test all this equipment out. So we're out here with the Godox R200 ring flash head unit. We've got all the accessories here that Godox sent me. What we're gonna do is we're gonna start by putting the camera on here. So as you would normally use a ring flash on camera, we're gonna attach this to here and then we're going to start shooting. I have been testing out the reflector off camera in some other photo shoots that I did previously, but today we're gonna do all of it. So we're gonna start with on camera and then move to off camera as we move along. And if you haven't watched my overview video of how to set all this stuff up, go ahead and go up in the corner here and watch that video so you can see how to set this thing up on the camera. All right, so now we are all set up on camera, ready to go. All right, so now that we've got the camera all set up with the ring flash on it, we're gonna grab our flash unit. We can put this on here. And I was told by a viewer on my last video that the base kit for the R200 um, does come with this little pouch. So that's really cool. So you can just sling it over yourself. We're gonna power it on, grab our camera, turn our camera on, turn on our flash here, see where we're at. Group B, let's see what we got. So this is on camera. Okay, we can get in a little closer. I may actually switch to the 24 to 70 so that we can do a wide shot and then a tight shot, yeah. I'm gonna do that. So I am gonna go ahead and switch the lens to the 24 to 70 2.8 so that um, I can do a wide shot so we can look at the fall pattern on here. And then I'll switch back to this after we've done all of our tests. All right, so now that we've got the 24 to 70 uh, lens on here, we're gonna go ahead and redo the first couple of photos so that I can show you a tight shot versus a wide shot and we can see what the light fall pattern is. So we're gonna stay in pretty much the same spot. So I'm gonna find me a spot here. So I'm gonna be right here at the edge of the concrete and we're gonna do a tight shot. All right. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stand right here in the same spot, but I'm gonna do a wide shot, go out to 24 millimeters. Yeah, that'll be good. That can show us where our fall off is. Do one more. Very nice, okay, perfect. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and put 
the tightest grid they have, which is this 20 degree grid. I'm gonna put this one back on and we'll do the same thing so we can see the wide, see where the fall off is with this 20 degree grid. So we'll start at the 24 millimeter. Much, much tighter. Yeah, as you can see, awesome. Now I'm gonna go all the way back into 70. So that's gonna, here, let's go ahead and come over this way. There you go, perfect, right there. Very nice, okay. Go wide. Oh yeah, much, much less fall off as you'll be able to see. Very nice. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and step through the 30, then the 40 degree. All right, so this is the 30 degree. Wide. Yep. Go into 70. Very nice. Let's do one more at the wide just to see where our fall off is. Very nice. Now we'll do the 40 degree. We'll start at the 24. Let's see where our light's hitting. Oh yeah. Awesome, as you can see, the beam of light is much wider, but still not as wide as taking it all the way off. So, very nice. Perfect. Do more wide here. Awesome, now I'm gonna take this off and do another wide one so we can just see the difference. A night and day difference yeah where the lights hitting so much smaller of a beam that's really really cool so we stepped through the R200 grids so we did the 40 the 30 and the 20 degree um, obviously looking at the difference in the uh, beam of light that's hitting our model now that we've done those and you see what those can do now what we'll go ahead and do is we'll start changing the color. Godox did send me the gels for this R200. So we're gonna look at some of those. I'm not gonna use all of them uh, because I don't use um, all the different colored gels. But what I do like to use the gels for is to change my color temperature. So I'm gonna change it so that we'll get a lot more warmth or a lot more cool in there so that I can change the background color the way that I want it to be. Usually during sunset time, I use a color temperature blue gel so that I can make the sky and the background a lot more orange. And I'll show you how I do that coming up. These are the gels that uh, Godox has for the ring flash. So what I like to use uh, primarily are the CTOs and the CTBs. So I like to start at a half CTB or a half CTO, depending on what we're looking for. Open up our gels here. And I have not put these on yet, so um, we will see. It looks like they have these dividers for each of the colors or each individual gel. Do they have these marked? I guess it really doesn't matter. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna go and just flip all this over because I wanna get to our oranges and we're gonna start with our half CTO so we can blue our background. How these are going to work, I'm not sure, but 
They're very, very flimsy and they don't look like they're gonna be super easy to put on. So it looks like it'll probably be easiest to use with one of our grids and just snap it onto the front. All right, so for this section, when we're dealing with the grids, is I decided to put this off camera so that it'll be easier for me to manipulate and change out this stuff. The gels that they give you are very, very flimsy. Um, so I'm not sure what the easiest way for these to be put on. It looks like there are some little notches here. Oh, they do, okay. So there are these little notches inside the R200 right at the very end. And that's what allows you to put these gels on. Now, not sure how sturdy this is going to be, especially outside. Um, I don't trust that this is going to stay on uh, because it's very flimsy. There's nothing really holding it on, even though the little tabs just go right into here and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So, Right inside here, you'll see the little flap. There's these little um, sections inside the R200 that allow you to put the little tabs through. I don't have high, high confidence in this staying on with the breeze. I can even see even with the light breeze that we have right here, it's blowing around and all of these gels are actually blowing around even with a light breeze. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put a grid on here just to help hold that on a little bit better. But when using gels, uh, usually what you're supposed to do, if your lighting isn't gonna be changing and stuff like that, um, you can set the settings in your camera, change your white balance and your color balance in camera. Uh, but I usually don't do that, I shoot in raw, so I can manipulate the colors super easily. So I don't bother changing my settings, I just have it in auto white balance and I'll be able to manipulate that in post-production. But I went ahead and I grabbed one of the grids. This is the 30 degree grid. Um, so it's kind of our more narrowed uh, light path. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is use the color temperature orange gel. This is the half CTO gel. We're gonna go take a couple of photos and I'll show you how that will manipulate our background and go from there. So I've got the lighting set up here. I've got the R200 on my light stand right here. The color temperature orange gel with the 30 degree grid set up right here. I've got it at about a 45 degree angle off of the model and we're going to see what this will produce. So I'm gonna bring my power down to a quarter. We're gonna do a real tight shot here. Okay, we need to bring our power back up. Beautiful, so this is gonna make our background really blue. So when we color balance this uh, in post, it's gonna be really, really blue. Not as blue as it could be if we were using the, the full CTB gel, but let's go ahead and do a wide one so we can see what our 30 degree grid is doing. Oh, that's beautiful. So you'll see that when we're super wide like this, where that 30 degree grid is hitting. So we'll actually be able to adjust this and we're gonna bring it down just a hair so we can get a little more light on the dress as well. And I can look through one of the really cool things about having this R200 is I can look through the hole of the ring flash and see where her face is. So if I can get her face centered in here, that means that the lighting is gonna be centered around her. So let's try that again. There we go. Now we got all the light on the top part of her dress and her face and perfectly even. That looks really, really good. I'm gonna do one vertical like this. There we go. Now you'll see, now that the flash is not on the camera, 
we've got a much more directional light we've got shadows showing dimension and this is how i prefer to photograph with the light off of the camera just beautiful i'm gonna do one actually what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna bring the light in closer and i'm gonna get as close as i can and check out our highlights in the eyes okay so now what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna switch to the color temperature blue gel we're gonna do the halves only so we're gonna do half ctb coming up next because the gels are not labeled you have to go based on their intensity so um, it's pretty easy to figure it out uh, when you have all of them together, but if you had these separate, you wouldn't really be able to tell which one you're using without having the other colors with you. So I'm going to switch out the orange with the blue. And again, this is not very easy, hence why I prefer to use MagMod when it comes to a situation like this because this just takes forever. All right, so now we've got our blue gel on. Go ahead and put our grid back on to make sure this is gonna stay in place. Put this back where it was, right like that. I'm gonna go put the orange gel away so it does not blow away. So this is the R200 with the half CTB gel on it. Very nice. Yeah, and when we get this into post, you'll be able to see the difference in the colors. I can even see on the back of the camera the color difference because I have it in auto white balance it's showing me what it's assuming is correct but when we go ahead and balance these you won't even know super tight very nice okay so that's gonna show us uh, the difference in color temperature of orange versus blue I'm not gonna do the greens because it's just gonna look like crap uh, when, we, when we go into post. Now what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna take the grid off and our gel, and we're gonna put the reflector on. So I am very pleased with the reflector, and I will show you why here in a minute. Now we've got our reflector on here our beauty dish, reflector, whatever you want to refer to it as. What this is going to do is it's going to bounce the light onto our model. Obviously, we don't have a grid anymore. Wow, did that increase the brightness? You know what? Let's do this real quick because I want to test it. Um, I'm going to remove the grid real quick, keep all my settings the same, and see where we're at. I know we had the grid on before, so I had to brighten it up, but I just want to do a quick test here to see. All right, so we are at half power on the flash, 1 200th of a second, F2.8, ISO 100. Okay, so it's a little brighter. So let's go ahead and let's turn this down and see where we need to be. So we're at a quarter power here. Quarter power is not enough, so we'll go back up to just half. All right, so right at half power is there. And this beauty dish is actually easier to put on than some of the grids, so that's pretty neat. So, all right, half power, beauty dish on, same spot. So there's negligible difference in light output with this. So even though it's bouncing the light off of the reflector here um, and onto our model, the light output is indistinguishable, uh, which is really, really good to know. So we are going to keep that on. 
we're gonna do come in real close the lighting with this dish is much much nicer because it's a larger light source it just gives that little extra softness as with the r200 itself we also have a grid for the reflector here so i'm going to grab just one grid uh, we know what the difference is going to be so i'm just going to grab the middle one so i'm going to grab our 30 degree grid here pop it on here and see what our output is going to be as we know it's going to be dark so we need to brighten this up so we are now at full power and as we can see okay so it looks like we're actually losing a little bit of light off the top of her head with this so i'm gonna have to bring this up just a touch there we go. right there so now that we are up we're going to do the same thing do it tight Beautiful. Very pretty. So now we can see that our light fall off. We're not hitting the edge of this arch here. It's all right into here, uh, which is really, really nice. So we're gonna come in, do a super close up. And with the larger light source, and I'll show you when we uh, zoom in on the computer, but with the larger light source, you can actually see the ring much better. It's much more pronounced in the eye, which is really, really nice. So if we come in super close. Boom. Gorgeous. The light output with this beauty dish on here is just so much nicer, in my opinion, um, than the ring flash itself it's just a larger light source if the lighting is softer we can move this thing around and it's just going to do some incredible stuff so um like i said i'm not going to do the grid for all of this because i showed you the grid shape just on the ring flash itself i just showed you the 30 degree grid versus no grid i think i'm going to continue using the 30 degree grid here so now i've showed you pretty much everything that you can do with this and what comes with it so that you can make the decision yourself as to what you wanna order. Obviously, you can order each of these grids individually uh, or no grid at all. I do prefer the grid because it is just gonna throw uh, light everywhere. I like to focus my lighting on my model itself and I don't want the outside and all of the uh, surroundings to be lit up as well. So I do like the grids. I think this 30 degree grid is probably pretty perfect. It does cut down on light. As you guys saw, I had to bump uh, my power up from a half to full power in order to get the same light output, but uh, the shape is way better. So I really like that. So now Magali and I are gonna be going around this little complex and we're just going to photograph with this setup. I'm gonna do some with the grid and some without but this is gonna be my setup for all of the photos coming here uh, now. So this is it. So we've got the R200, the beauty dish, and the 30 degree grid, and we're gonna walk around, get some photos. Hope you guys enjoy. So now let's get into my thoughts on this R200 kit. Do I think that it's a good kit? Yes, I think it's a good kit. Is it $279 good? Uh, maybe, 
but considering the fact that you still have to have bought or have to buy an AD200, that is just an additional $279. Are there other modifiers that you could use to reproduce similar results to the ring flash? Yes, that are a lot cheaper. But this has a very unique use case for it, and that's on camera. Having it on camera for events and stuff like that, I think would be really good. But now talking about having it on camera, one of the biggest drawbacks that I found when using the R200 was the fact that I had a zoom lens on it and the zoom ring was inside of the R200 and that made it kind of difficult to zoom in and out. So if you are using a zoom lens and wanting to get different focal lengths while using this, it will be a little bit more difficult, especially if you need to do that in a quick situation. As long as you don't have sausage fingers like me, you might be okay, but I did find it a little bit difficult. Is it workable? Yes, but there is that little degree of difficulty when trying to use a zoom lens with the R200. So what do I think of the quality of light that it produces? I think especially with the reflector on is really, really good. I mean, I used this setup. I used the reflector and a 30 degree grid and the R200 on several photo shoots. And I'll kind of go through some of the photos that I did uh, with that. I think it's a really neat kit. Um, I think that it does produce really good lighting, um, especially off camera. I, like I said before, and I've said it many a times, I'm not a big fan of on camera flash, but taking that off of the camera, it really does produce really good lighting. And I do like the way that the ring, especially with the reflector on it, makes the images look. So the fact that the kit is super small and super lightweight, I think makes it just that little bit more appealing, especially with that reflector on it. Let's go through some of the photos that I have taken with this kit in real world situations. So the first photo shoot that I had after I had gotten this was a maternity shoot out uh, in some falls. And those falls were about a half a mile hike uh, into, <laughs> Uh, into the mountains and stuff wasn't a terrible hike but it was a little bit you know hilly ups and downs and all of that good stuff so having this kit uh, being smaller and lighter uh, did make for an easy trip so in there I did some stuff with just the mother they also have two other kids we did some with them and of course with mom and dad then later that evening I had a maternity session out on my property and it was a sunset session and that's where this little kit really shined if i was taking this out into the mountains and stuff like that during sunset it would make for a really easy kit to tote around and all of that good stuff and what i was able to produce with this was really really nice and the fact that i didn't have a large soft box with me with the wind blowing and stuff like that um, it really did help produce some really awesome images. One thing that I forgot to film while I was out with my model uh, was, can it overpower the sun? No, <laughs> that's the short answer. The short answer is no. I used the 85 millimeter Viltrox 1.8 on my Nikon Z7 II with an eight stop ND filter and I was barely able to get um, a proper exposure. I was able to do it. I was able to overpower the sun, but barely. And that's with using an ND filter. So the flash was not in high speed sync. I had the flash relatively close to my subject, but I was able to do it, but it's it won't just overpower like just blasting a <laughs> the Fresnel head 8200 right at your model where you'll be able to do that. Um, so yes, you can, but there's caveats. So now let's talk about the accessories. If you are planning on getting the R200, if that's why you're watching this video is because you're planning on getting the R200 and you wanna know what to get, my suggestion is to get the R200, the reflector, and one of the grids. So as I showed you in this video, 
the different degrees of grids. Obviously the narrower the degree of grid, like the 20 degree grid, you're gonna lose more light. So you will have to bump your power level up on your flash. So just be sure that you understand that. In my opinion, the 30 degree grid, that gives you a narrow enough beam of light, but doesn't cut down on your light like the 20 degree grid does. So you aren't gonna need all of these grids, I can tell you right now. Just look at what I did in this video and see what might work for you. Would I recommend this? If you are looking for a ring flash, yes. You're not gonna get a better ring flash head than this. All the other ring flash heads out there, or all the other ring flashes out there, I should say, will not give you the power of the AD200. There's a bunch of ring flashes that are the power of a speed light, but getting the power of the AD200 in this ring flash is really where uh, it shines, and I think is where I can recommend it. If you use a ring flash, or you want to use a ring flash, and you need extra power, the R200 is a great piece of kit. If I missed anything in this video, please feel free to leave a comment down below, like the video if you did, share, and subscribe if you want to see more content like this. Who knows, there might be some other companies out there that want me to review stuff. I'd be more than happy to try it. The next review that I've got coming for you guys is the review of this microphone. This is Godox's new EM68G microphone. It's a really great microphone. Uh, other than the lavalier microphone that uh, you guys heard during this video while we were out photographing the model, everything of me sitting right here has been used with this microphone. I think it's fantastic. The fact that it has a gain knob on it is really, really nice. So you can adjust the gain to how you speak, how close it is to you and all of that good stuff. Uh, so that's my initial thoughts of it, but I am going to be doing a full review and side-by-side -side comparison of this with my old microphone that I can already tell you is way better. So if you guys are interested in the microphone, stay tuned, subscribe to the channel, and I'll be doing that review here shortly. I wanted to get this out there so you guys can figure out if the R200 is right for you. This is Josh with Shua Photography. We'll see you in the next one.